Praise the Lord. Again, we just welcome you here to Founded by Ministries uh, Friday Night Bible Study. We uh, had to cut off for a moment there, had some uh, technical difficulties, and but we were able to straighten it out and to uh, to proceed. Uh, God bless you. I want you to go with me in prayer, if you would, in the blessed name of Jesus. We honor you and we praise you and we thank you for being so gracious and kind to us all. You blessed us throughout the course of this week and even on this day. You've allowed us to be able to live according to your word, according to your will. You heard our cry. You answered our petitions in the blessed name of Jesus. We honor you and bless you for being so good and gracious and kind to us all. Lord, open up our heart that we receive your word and we be doers of your word and not hearers only. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, again, thank you for joining in on this uh, this Friday evening uh, with us here at uh, Founded by Ministries. Uh, we are so grateful that God gives us the opportunity in which to speak to, uh, to people to render the word that God has given us to, to give. For in the, that we're in a day where we need to hear a word from God. Now, I want to talk about something tonight that's uh, uh, pertaining to us following what God, uh, following what He says in His Word. In fact, uh, His Word, it, it, He wants us to follow every every part of His Word, not some part of parts of it, but every part, all the parts of, of God's Word. So, um, I'm, I'm reminded when I talk to uh, a lot of my children. I uh, have a number of children, and I've told them over a number of years, just do what's right. And when we look at our life, and and and, and when we are faced against uh, difficulties and hard decisions to make, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to come to a conclusion of what to do when you uh, look at what's right to do, mainly what God says. We're going to look in the Word of God, and we, uh, we'll find that, that God has always given instructions for man to obey what He says. God wants us to do what is good and do what's right, but do what is good and right in God's eyesight and not in our own eyesight, but not in, not in man's eyesight. So we're going to look at some scripture and we're going to find where in the scripture and how God, how uh, we're going to see an example of how one did what was right in the eyesight of self and the eyesight of other men and the consequences for that. And there are always consequences when you do what's right in the eyesight of self and, and of, of man. Uh, but God will have us do what's right uh, and, and to do what's good in his sight because he will instruct us in a way uh, in a, that we obey what he says to do and we hearken to his word. Um, and then there's rewards for that as well. I want to draw your attention to the sixth chapter of, of the book of Deuteronomy. Sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, in this, uh, uh, Moses he is uh, he's exalting uh, the uh, children of Israel uh, to to listen to God, to hear God, and to uh, to obey God. And he spells this out in the sixth chapter and telling them that it will be for the good, but they have to listen to God. They they got to to obey God. And then they say, they said it's going to be good for them. and But it has to be, and what they do, it, it, he's instructing them in a way that what they are to do will be good in God's eyesight. Not in man, necessarily in man's eyesight, but in, in God's eyesight. Uh, uh, I want to read, if I may, uh, uh, in the uh, ASV, uh, in the, uh, uh, it's an easier read, uh, a version that's an easier read. Uh, but uh, just follow along with me if you would. But in this uh, sixth chapter, the word of God says, Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances which is Jehovah your God commands to teach you that ye may do them in the land whether ye go over to possess it, that, and that thou mayst fear Jehovah thy God to, uh, to keep all his statutes, his commandments which I uh, command thee, and thou and and thy son and thy son's son and all the days of thy life, and that and thy days may be prolonged. Look at that. Uh, so he's telling them that they are to keep the commandments of God. All the things that was instructed, they they were to be they are to be uh, are to be kept. 
Uh, I want you to turn, turn uh, quick, uh, quickly, turn to that 18th verse. Uh, I want you to see something in the 18th verse here. 18, it says something here I think is going to be uh, uh, beneficial to all of us to, uh, to look at. 18 verse says, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of Jehovah, that it may be well with thee in the sight of God that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which uh, Jehovah swore unto thy fathers uh, and, 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 and looking at this that is the objective uh, here in this sixth chapter that they will the children of Israel will do that that is good and in and, and the sight of God uh, when our Lord God instructs us, he's instructing us on what he uh, sees that is good. And see, he sees that is right uh, in his sight. Not again, not necessarily in our own sight. Uh, but but in reading uh, the, go back if you would to that, uh, that fourth uh, verse because in, and then he goes on and speaking in the fourth verse. Uh, he's, he says here, uh, you know, we left off there, and he says the, uh, he says, Hear, O Israel, he says, uh, our God is uh, is one, and thou shalt love uh, thy God, Jehovah, with all thy heart and with all thy souls. He's telling them exactly what they need to do, giving them those instructions. And with all thy might, God wants all of us, and he wants all of our love, our whole, he wants our our whole heart, if you would. And he said, with our whole, with our soul, with our, all of our might. Uh, and he said, and these words which I command thee this day, Moses says, shall be upon thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And here we find it is important for uh, uh, them, for this to be uh, something, the words that's given unto uh, the children of Israel, uh, the leaders, the elders, the head of the families, and not only for it to be uh, instructions for them, but for them to teach their their children as well. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently and tell the children unto thy children, and shall talk of them uh, when thou sittest in, the, in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt uh, shall bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontless between thy eyes, and uh, shall I write them upon the, uh, the door post of thy house and upon thy gates. These are, uh, again, uh, instructions that are given that did this be a part of their life and that it governs their life, the things that God tells them to do. He said, it shall be when uh, when God shall, uh, shall bring thee into the land which he uh, swears unto thy fathers. One thing, it's important for us to know that God gives instructions that can help us uh, in the days, in the, in the weeks and months and years to come on this side of heaven uh, uh, so that we'll know how to live according to what God wants. So we'll know how to live a good and a righteous life according in the eyesight of God. Uh, so he says, he's going to, excuse me, he's going to take them into the land, but he gives them instructions on how uh, to conduct themselves, if you would, and to walk in obedience un unto God and to walk. Uh, so that's what he is instructing here. And he, uh, he says, we're going to, uh, 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 a land which uh, he swore to the fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee uh, great and goodly cities, uh, which thou build not houses full of all good things. How many know that what God has given us and prepared for us is always is always good? He says, "With thou uh, uh, filleth not," meaning that uh, it's not anything we're gonna have to work after. Anything that we don't have to toil to really to get, because it all comes from God. All good things come from uh, it comes from God. God is the one that gives uh, to us, which 
He, he says, and the cisterns hewn out, which thou heweneth not. Because you, you're not doing this. Everything you got is because God has given it to you. Everything you do, everything you have is because God has given it to you. Even the knowledge that you have is because God has given you the knowledge that you have. And the list goes on. All of our possessions is because of God. What we don't have because God doesn't hasn't given it to us and doesn't want us to have it. But at the same time, as he instructs, we must obey. We must follow. Uh, he goes on. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the 13th verse. Uh, follow. Go with me if you would. Would thou shall fear God, and, and and him shall thou serve, and shall swear by his his name. Uh, ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people that are round about you. And even today, we then there was other types of God, but even today there's all types of God. Anything that you put before God becomes, is, is uh, the word of God says, it is God. It's your God. So because it's God that comes first, he's always put first. He's your master. There's no other master but him. But if you put anything before him, then it is as, as if it is, again, uh, your God. And so he says, don't serve those gods, the little G's round, uh, round about you, for Jehovah, your God, is in the midst of thee. He said, the word says, he's jealous. He's jealous. And, and, and he says, lest an anger of God uh, be kindled against thee, and, be, and he destroy thee from off the face of the earth. 16 says, ye shall not tempt God as ye tempted him and, and Massa, uh, ye shall, in 17, ye shall diligently keep the commandments of God. And that's our objective, to, to obey God, to follow what God tells us to do. How do you follow what, the, what, what, what God tells you to do? Do the things that God instructs, because what he instructs is right and is good in his sight. Is right. It's only when you don't follow what God says and operate in disobedience that it's not good in God's uh, sight. Uh, and so he says here, which would again in, in 17, he shall diligently keep the commandments of, of God and his and testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded thee, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of of God that it may be well with thee. Uh, our objective should be for uh, us to be pleasing uh, to God, and we want our life uh, uh, to be uh, to be a good life. But in order for our life to be good, uh, we have to do what's good in the sight of God. And so, whether you think that the life that you're living is a good life or, or not, I think you need, and all of us need to do an assessment. And ensure that our life lines up with God and, it, and with what the Word of God says. Therefore, if it does, then it is pleasing in uh, in the sight of of God, uh, if you would. So uh, the Scripture it goes on and it talks and, and it talks about how one could, uh, he, he, of course, continues to give uh, give instructions. And, and let me read a little bit more, and then we will move on. And, and uh, I'm reading here in 21st verse. Then thou shalt say unto thou sons. Look at this. This is important for you, you to look at this. Because uh, 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 your people that are watching us, even our children. Uh, he said, then thou shalt say unto thou sons. Because uh, uh, they, uh, they was wondering about why folk lived the life. I mean, why the children of Israel were living according to the rules and the ordinances. Uh, uh, that Moses had handed down to them, and then so uh, the children uh, had asked the question, why do you live according to, to these ordinances and according to uh, 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 what the things that uh, and you live the way that you live? Well, the Word of God said that the, here's the response that they were to give to the children. In 21 it said, then thou shalt say unto thy sons, uh, when we were in Pharaoh, bondage uh, 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 we were in a position in Egypt where we were in bondage. The word of God says, 
and God brought us up out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and God showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, I'm reading in 22nd, and upon all his house before our eyes, 23, and he brought us out from thence, and that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And Jehovah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear him for our good, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. And he said, as at this day, and it shall be righteous unto us that we observe to do all um, this commandment before God as he has commanded. So uh, the word we find here, that what has happened here, even uh, when the children uh, 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 inquire uh, to uh, their uh, parents, why do you live according to the word of God? It, it, they, they, respond, they were to respond in that manner to let them know that it was God that brought them out. It was God that delivered them and gave them instructions on how to live and live a good life that is pleasing in the eyesight of God. God has always instructed his people that we follow every all of his word and to follow after what God is telling us to do, that we obey God because it is beneficial for us to obey God. Uh, there's a word that when you can look in the uh, 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 Galatians 6 and 9, turn to that if you would, Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9, it, uh, uh, it says something here, uh, uh, but, but, but one thing I want you to see here, in Galatians 6 and 9, uh, that the word God says, it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for, uh, for in due, due season we shall reap if we faint not. A lot of times when you uh, continue to live uh, a righteous, a godly, and a holy life, uh, sometimes to some some folk they get frustrated with that life and and but but God and, and living that good life but you must know I'm reminded of somebody I don't know it's a song if I'm not mistaken that says that I'm living a good life uh, uh, let me tell you this walking with God is living a good life some folk get frustrated in doing when you walk with God you're living right you're doing the things that are good. God has called for you to do what is good and what is right. But do what is good and is right as we read in Deuteronomy in God's eyesight, not in our own eyesight. But he said, don't be worried in your doing good, in your well-doing, in the life in which you live. Don't get frustrated with that because in due season, there's going to become a reward for you, but you cannot faint. He said, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint, if we not give up. We must be consistent in doing good in the eyesight of God and pleasing in the eyesight of God and doing that that's right in the eyesight of God because it is that that God will hold us accountable to. And that is his word. To everything that he says in his word and the understanding that he gives us uh, uh, within his word. Uh, so we find here that, that it pays off for us to, uh, to walk with God and to uh, walk in the things that God instructs us that are good and the things that God instructs us uh, uh, that are, are right. God's calling for us to follow after him. I want you to turn, if you would, and to obey him. Uh, but I want you to turn to the uh, 15th chapter of the book of First uh, Samuel. I'm not going to keep you uh, tonight, but I want you to I want you to see something here because it's very important for uh, for you to uh, to see that the importance of us of following what God says, walking in the things that are right and the things that are good, because for the birth God He created us for the purpose 
to, uh, to do for good works. And when you're doing good works, everything that he outlines for us in our life is all good. We create, in fact, turn to that, if you would, Ephesians 2 and 10, and then we'll come back to 15, but turn to Ephesians uh, 2 and 10, and then we'll go back to uh, the book of uh, 1 Samuel 15, but 2 and 10, it says here in 10, uh, in the 10th verse, in the second chapter, it says, for we are his, talking about Jesus. We are Jesus' uh, workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, uh, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we uh, should walk in them. See, everything that God instructs us is in a way of righteousness, is in a way of good. And, and because it's the way that God sees things, and based on how God sees things, he orders us and directs us in that particular way. And so we must follow after what, how God, he, uh, how he instructs us. And so we find here in looking, turning back to uh, uh, 1 Samuel 15, chapter, and fifth, in the uh, first verse, I want to read in the first through the fourth verse, it's a story where King Saul, he was anointed king. And he's anointed king, and Samuel in here has anointed, uh, is anointing him at, as king, but he's giving him instructions at the same time. And but you must know that Samuel, he, he's the he's the prophet, uh, but but with him being the prophet, so he's speaking uh, on behalf of God as a representative of God. So Samuel's words uh, that he's speaking unto Saul. Uh, uh, then Saul uh, was charged to obey because it's just as God speaking and telling uh, Saul what to do. Samuel, in the first verse, says, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken. Listen, look at that. He said, now, now God sent me to anoint you. He said, but, but, but you're going to have to listen. And, and, and those are the things that you must know that, that, that God doesn't just say things for us to just to be seeing it, uh, 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 but he wants us to walk and to follow after what he says uh, uh, and to obey what he says. And so when you look at that, that's a, and that's why the word of God says we, he not only wants to be hearers of God's word, I think it's in James, uh, but doers as well. We have to do what God says. And doing, when, when you do what God says, you're going to do what's right. You're going to do what's good when you do what God says. Because God will allow your life to be, be when people look at you, they will, they, will, they will label you as being a good person. Uh, they will label you as being a right per person. You look at Job, you look at various people in the scripture. Who was it? Zacharias and Elizabeth. Uh, uh, Job, uh, uh, Joseph, different ones. You read the scripture, you find they said that they were righteous people. They were good people. In other words, they followed what God and obeyed what God said. They did what was right. They did what was good in the eyesight of God. See, because it's important, and that's the, the key here, that, that it's important that you do what's right in the eyesight of God. The travesty today, if you give me just a minute, I, I, I want to go through this, but, but I'm not going to be long. Uh, here's a travesty today. That folk do what's right in their own eyesight. What they think that is right. What they think that is good. But you must know that what you think is good and what you think is right may not necessarily be what God thinks is good and right. And you have to make sure that what you think is good and right and make sure it lines up with what God says. And then you need to make some changes uh, if it doesn't. In fact, what you think and what you come up with doesn't even mean anything. The book of Proverbs, it says, Trust in the Lord with all heart, lean not to thy own understanding. And only, so don't go about what you, what you know to do. That is right. Because it's not based on what you know to do that is right, but it's based on what God says. What he says, what God says, okay. I said, basically, in, in, uh, in, in, in this uh, first 
the 15th chapter, he, Samuel's talking to Saul. Samuel, uh, first verse. Also, uh, Samuel also, I'm reading in, in a different version now, uh, uh, the uh, uh, King James Version. Uh, so you read along with me. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over, uh, over his people, over Israel. Uh, and now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. And then he, he says unto Thus said the Lord of hosts. He says, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he camped up from, when he came up from Egypt. Verse 3 says, Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman. In infant and suckling, he says, ox and sheep, camels and ass. These were instructions that they got to give to Samuel to give to uh, the uh, uh, newly uh, anointed king. And he said, I want you to go and I want you to kill the king and everything. I want you to just demolish them, if you would. I don't want anything left. I don't want nothing. All the possessions, I want everything gone. Gone. Agag was the king's name. Uh, uh, if you move on to verse 9, if you would, uh, verse 9 says, But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fattened and of the lambs and all that was good. And I want you to see that. All that was good. And he says, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vowed and refused that they destroyed utterly. See, see, they kept everything that they, I put it this way, that they thought was good. See, it was good in their eyesight, but it was not good in God's eyesight. God wanted it all destroyed. And they failed to follow the instructions, but it was Saul um, that was held accountable, and he was the one that was responsible for not follow, following and obeying what God says. Now, regardless of whether it looked good to, uh, to Saul or even whether it looked good to all of the soldiers, uh, Saul had a command, uh, was commanded to, Follow the instructions of God. He said, hearken to the words. Hearken to the words. Hearken to the words. And I'm telling some folks today, hearken to the words of God. That he's telling you to live a godly, a holy, and a righteous life. He's not calling for any other life but a godly, a righteous, and a holy life. And there's not a sermon that go by that you don't hear me say, that a person's going to have to repent. This is a day that God is calling for repentance. That one will have to repent of their sin. And, 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 and God is calling back for a people that have made themselves ready. But it begins with repentance. God has opened up a door for that to happen. But let me let me go back here if I may. But, but again, good. They, they, the word of God says... And all that was good, but it was good in, as I'm reading in verse 9, but it was good in their sight. So it was good in their sight, but at the same time, but it was bad in God's sight. And the reason why it was bad in God's sight, because it was disobedience. Because it was disobedience. The word of God says that, that Saul, he, uh, he turns around and, well, let me, let me move on to 24. Turn to 24, if you would. 24. For verse says, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Because sin, because it had been exposed, uh, Saul was uh, uh, exposed, uh, and it was revealed um, that Saul had not destroyed everything as God, as Samuel had been instructing him. And so that was, uh, was revealed. Samuel, he comes uh, 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 to um, this, uh, this point where he says that he has sinned. But even prior to that, the scripture says that Saul, he was offering up, tried to offer up a sacrifice unto God. 
And God had to tell him through Samuel um, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And, and so 24 says, And Saul said unto Samuel, He said, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy word and thy words, uh, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. L listen, this is very important because these are the things that people are experiencing still today. That people are obeying what other folks say and what other folks think, and they are more concerned about how other folk or other people see them. And, 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 and so they're concerned about even the world and how the world looks at them. And, and, and more than that, even themselves. Because uh, if, if you differ from what God says, then, then I have great concerns with that. And so does God have a great concern. Because whether you see it or not, whether you, if God says one thing and then you say something different, as I stated, you should line up with what the word of God says. Therefore, if you were to do that, then you would be pleasing, and what you would be doing is good in the eyesight, eyesight of God. And, 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 and I don't care if it's of, of any value, what you're looking at, and you're calling it good, uh, because you see value in whatever it is. But if God says, like he told Saul, get rid of it, destroy it, uh, yeah. If he says do that, then you must do that because in I and God is God's plan, is God's purpose, is God's will that will be carried out. We got to follow God's plan, God's purpose, God's will that will be carried out. It's Jesus that said, "Thy will be done, not not my will, but Thy will be done." And so we have to come to that uh, conclusion that is God, and we we don't have, shouldn't have to go through so much for God to bring us to that point. But it should uh, be uh, that thought from the onset that we first think that we're going to do whatever God says do. And when we face up against obstacles, whatever, the question should not be uh, uh, what do we want to do in that situation, but what would God have us to do in that situation. So we look at this, and so we find that Saul, he says that he, he has sinned, and he, he he feared the people over God. Uh, fear in this uh, in in this text it does not mean trembling, as we know fear, but it means he reverenced and he respected what other folks said over God. And 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 we today, people today, they reverence and they respect what feet what people say over what God says over His word. And so you must put God's word first. And whatever you know to do that is right, do it. How God instructs you to do the things that are right and the things that are good, you should do it because it's that that God will hold you accountable for. Last verse, and, and I'm going to let you go. Look, read, read further. It's 28, verse 28. Verse 28 says, And Samuel said unto him, The Lord had rent the kingdom of Israel from you this day, from thee this day, and have given it to a neighbor of thine, and he was referring to David, a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Now, not in the sense that he's better uh, because better than, than Saul, uh, uh, well, what he was referring to is that uh, he was given it, given the position of kingship uh, to David, because David was a man after God's own heart, and it was David that would obey God. God looks at obedience. God looks at, did, did David make some mistakes? Yes, he made some mistakes, but when he made the mistakes, uh, he was in line as God to forgive him. And God, you, in, in most cases, when you make a mistake, unless God is giving, outlining some things for you to do, and you keep making his mistakes over and over again, doing the same thing over and over again. We don't know when God's going to uh, gonna reject you as he did with Saul. That was the only mistake that Saul made. There was other things that Saul did as well, but it was this particular thing that he did that God ended up rejecting Saul. And, and you don't know when, when God's going to be at a point where 
you were, it's the last time you're going to have the ability to say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. And there's some people that are in that state and in that condition right now. And I don't know your condition. Only God knows your condition. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that you are to walk right and holy uh, and be pleasing unto God. And if, if your walk has not been that, and, and God's given you the opportunity to be able to hear this word, and now you can take uh, advantage of this opportunity, this door of opportunity, where God's speaking to your heart now, and he wants you to surrender your all and to walk and, and, and to yield who you are unto him. Because he wants your, as we read in Deuteronomy, he wants your whole heart. He wants all of you, every bit of you. And there's some things that you've done and has not walked in accordance to God's word. And God is giving you the opportunity now to straighten your life out that you can accept him and to walk in obedience unto him. And you got to ask God to forgive you. And, 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 and only God can forgive you. Nobody else has the ability or in position to forgive you uh, of your sins but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God has that ability and to put you in his family and even to keep you in his family. No one but God. Now, for a man, can we forgive people? Yes, we can. Uh, but we can forgive, forgive a, pain, a person for their transgressions uh, that is against uh, that is against God. We God, it takes God uh, in order to do that. So, but with that being said, do what's right, do what's good, not in your eyesight, but in the eyesight of God. So, therefore, it's going to take you to read the Scripture and to be be, uh, be astute in the Word of God, and we must learn to study the Scripture, study it. There should not be a day that goes by that you're not reading the scripture and making it a part of your life because it's the word of God that, 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 that governs our life. It was the, uh, 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 along with the Holy Ghost that leads and guides us to, to all truth. So it's the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and it's the word of God that's left here for us to read and for the understanding to come through the Holy Spirit to open up our understanding and reading the scripture, to know what God wants, what's God was good and right in God's eyesight for us to be pleasing unto him. And let me pray for you, if I may. In the name of Jesus, dear Heavenly Father, we're asking you, all of those under the sound of my voice, that you would bless them, that they can walk in accordance to your word and the things that are on their heart right now that you have shown them uh, through this Bible study. I'm asking you, my Lord, uh, to deliver them from that, to forgive them uh, if you would, and that they'll walk upright before you. And even that soul that is not saved, for them to repent of their sin, and for them to go down in your name, because that truly is righteous. Um, that truly is right and good in your sight. And we're so grateful that you've given us the opportunity to be able to be saved. Thank you for being so good and kind to us all. Speak even to your people and to those that are not a part of your family and bring them in, if you would. Bring that person under the sound of my voice closer to you. Do it in the name of Jesus. Save the unsaved. The saved, bring them closer. The unsaved, bring them closer. That they be ready when you come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We just want to be and to make you happy and pleased with our life and do the things that are that are right and do the things that are good that's pleasing again in your sight in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen amen God bless you God bless you follow what the scripture tells you to do follow and obey God in all that you do do what's right and when you face up against situations and circumstances uh, after uh, after this closes uh, ask God Lord what's right Lord, what's right? Direct me to do what's right. And you want to do that the rest of your life for God to direct you to do what's good and direct you to do what's right. We wish you Godspeed. God bless you.